Trump is so broke. The breakdown starts now. Good evening and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm Tara Setmayer. The Rick Wilson is traveling. But do not fret. We have a great show for you tonight because it, Trump is broke. We're hearing about his financial troubles this week. And who better to have on than someone who has been following Trump's financial corruption for decades, David K. Johnston. He is joining me in a few minutes. We're going to talk all things Trump's difficulties, what are his options? What's going on? David has the scoop. So stay tuned for him. He'll be with me in a few minutes. Um, but before we get to that, I want to give some kudos to the Biden campaign. Ever since the State of the Union, I feel like there's been a shot. Like we all got whatever shot they gave Biden, whatever B12 it was. I feel like we all have had a political B12 shot since the State of the Union because there's been a new sense of energy injected into the Biden campaign since then. And I'm here for it. We've been waiting for this. It's about time. They needed to ramp this up. And they have. President Biden, since the State of the Union, has visited, I think, four out of the five major key battleground states and has had very successful events there. He's been on a fundraising tear. Um, he has outraised the Trump campaign by many, many times over. And he's doing really well. He's pulling in the money. People are excited about his campaign again. And they're starting to pay attention. They're starting to pay attention. And this is what we said would happen. As the campaign progressed and people started to see the binary choice and it has, you know, it sinks in that it is now Biden versus Trump, that folks would realize, like, we don't want to go back to that. We, 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 don't. we don't. We're not trying to go back to that four year stuff. Um, kudos to the Biden campaign's rapid response team. Uh, of course, obviously, here at the Lincoln Project, we do our own version of rapid response things. And um, it's great to see that the Biden campaign looks like they're taking a page out of our book where they are just hitting Trump where it hurts. And one of the things that they have been going after him on, like I said, this whole idea of are you better off four years ago? Well, many of you probably remember exactly where you were four years ago in March. I remember very vividly. It's almost like, you know, BC. For, for us, it's like, you know, before COVID, right? What life was like before COVID, what life was like after COVID, after the shutdown started. I was up at Harvard living on campus as a resident fellow and had to evacuate within a couple of days. It was nuts. Um, packed everything up into my car, including the cat, including Tiki. My husband flew up to come get me. We drove seven hours back like packed in the car like this. Tiki had a little spot to get out of Boston um, to come back to our house and start what life would be like in 2020 with COVID. And every day we saw Donald Trump give these insane press conferences and just absolutely blow, mishandle, botch the COVID response. And so the Biden campaign has been taking advantage of the Republicans who keep using the are you better off four years ago stuff. They they seem to think that America was better off four years ago. Well, no, we actually were not better off four years ago than we are right now. And I want to show you guys a clip of what the Biden rapid response team has put out answering that question. And then I see the disinfectant. And is there a way we can do something like that uh, by injection inside? Or and on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate your response to this crisis? I'd rate it a 10. I think we've done a great job. What do you say to Americans who are watching you right now who are scared? Uh, I say that you're a terrible reporter. That's what I say. Yeah. No, I don't take responsibility at all. We're doing, I think, really, really well. I'll tell you what. How? A thousand Americans are dying a day. They are dying. That's true. And you ha it is what it is. More of that, please. Keep it coming. Four years ago, it was awful in so many places in this country. And I don't think we were fully prepared for what COVID would bring and um, the lives that would be lost and all of the controversy around something as common sense as 
a communicable airborne disease wearing a mask to protect you from the spread of it. How that turned into this in, insane political controversy where people have, have to this day, don't speak to their family members over the vaccine, over wearing masks, over how we were trying to stay safe and keep ourselves alive during COVID. It's, it's still hard for me to fathom that this was even a controversy four years ago. And it's only because someone like Donald Trump, who is a, well, besides being an ignoramus and completely incompetent, but he's he's a sicko. He's got, he's a malignant narcissist where he seems to get off on death and destruction and the idea of, of sowing um, seeds of distrust and the conspiracy theories. He loves it. And it, because of that, coming flowing from the head, our country lost hundreds of thousands of more people than we actually needed to because of his lack of leadership. Could you imagine how much different the world would have been, our country in particular, if we actually had a competent president at the time four years ago? Imagine if Joe Biden had been president at the time. It would have been a completely different story. So um, keep it up. Keep it up. Campaign Biden. Keep it up. Hit them where it hurts. Remind the American people. Do not let the American people get amnesia about what life was like under Donald Trump. And speaking of life under Donald Trump, um, one of the things that we were always concerned about, obviously, was the fact that Donald Trump, being uh, as corrupt as he is and would sell the country down the river for to foreign adversaries, <clears throat> Russia, China, or whoever else, the Saudis, whoever, North Korea, whoever. We have always been concerned about his financial business dealings and corruption. And it's been a long time coming, decades in the making, for him to finally, finally be accountable for a lot of the shady business activity he's been involved in. This facade of him being the successful businessman and the BS of The Apprentice beamed into people's, into people's living rooms for years um, helped propel him to, to the presidency, no doubt about it. He was successful in, in convincing millions of Americans that he was a successful businessman. Well, my next guest is here to join me and discuss how not only is Donald Trump full of it and has never really been a successful businessman, but he is going to talk about what is happening now that Trump is unable to meet the deadline. I mean, he's got till Monday, but it doesn't look great to meet this deadline for the $464 million, with an M, <laughs> bond from the uh, attorney general's case against him in New York. What is he going to do? We're hearing he's panicking. What's he going to do? Is he going to make it? Are they going to seize the assets? Is he going to get far money? We're going to get all those questions answered by my next guest, David K. Johnston. He's a Pulitzer Prize winning investigative reporter, best selling author. He's written several books, particularly about Trump as well. Um, he runs the DCReport.org and he has spent decades of his life, God bless him, covering Donald Trump and his financial corruption. David K. Johnston, welcome, my friend. Glad to be here, Tara. Good to see you again. I had no idea that this week was going to turn out to be what it has turned out to be with the basically the lead stories every day have been about Donald Trump's inability to pay this half a billion, almost half a billion dollar bond. And once I saw that was developing, I said, we got we have to go get David K. Johnston because you, for whatever reason, you're a glutton for punishment, have dedicated so much of your life to following and investigating Donald Trump and his his um, financial misdealings. And I thought, I know that you know the ins and outs and our viewers are all, they all have questions about how is this going to play out? Is he going to get away with this? And before I we get into that, I want to run an ad that Lincoln Project put out. It's called Broke. And then we'll get into it right after. Oh, Donald, you're broke and busted. A fraud, a con, a low rent ripoff artist. We've always known it. So have you. Now America knows it. The courts are shutting down your crooked shell companies in New York. Bank fraud, insurance fraud. You know, those are crimes, right, Donald? They're dissolving the whole Trump Organization scam right from under you. Bankruptcy won't save you this time. You'll have to sell off everything. You might even lose control of that dump Trump Tower. No one will lend you money. 
money, Donald. They won't even let you hand it over to Junior or Eric. Never mind Ivanka. She hates you. Everything you ever built was built on a lie. You were never rich, never successful. New York is laughing at you. Always has. Always will. And now everyone knows it. Broke. Busted. The loser in chief. So we put that out at the end of 2023, not knowing that he would end up with almost half a billion dollars in judgments against him in 2024. What say you? Well, Donald is at the end of his uh, faux gold brick road. (laughs) Uh, He has posed as a billionaire his whole life. I first revealed back in 1990 that he wasn't a billionaire and he called me a liar for months. And then he had to put a document in the public record showing I was right. (laughs) Um, Donald simply makes stuff up. You know, he'll tell one reporter, I'm worth $3 billion, and an hour later, he'll tell someone else five. And he literally testified under oath a few years ago that his net worth fluctuates with his mood. Did we lose David? All right, we'll get him back. Not a problem. It happens. Usually it's Rick Wilson and his gremlins in the internet (laughs) that cause cause problems, but we'll get David back. We'll get it. No, 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 no need to fret. Um, But, you know, David K. Johnston isn't the only one who was calling out Donald Trump's wealth and questioning whether that was legit or not. Um, Tim Tim O'Brien, who is now over at Bloomberg, he was sued by Trump back a couple of years, I guess about 20 years ago now, because he too questioned Donald Trump's net worth and Trump hated it, hated it and sued him for $500 million. And um, I believe it was in that deposition where Trump said that his net worth fluctuates depending on how he feels. We've got David back. Hi there. Sorry. I don't know what's are. going on today. That's all right. It happens. But continue. Always operate as a con artist. What he does is he finds victims uh, or he gets his hands on a company or he creates something totally fraudulent like Trump University, where he said he'd have the greatest business professors of all time. And they turned out to be like fry cooks and things like that. And he extracts money from them. And then when he's extracted all he can, he leaves the carcass with all the unpaid bills. Most business people take their wealth and they build on it. They spend less than they make. Not Donald. Well, not only that, and I think it, 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 it is a good reminder for folks to, to remember that Donald Trump bankrupted casinos and he couldn't even get into the casino business in Atlantic City without his daddy co-signing for him. The mob boss is down there. I'm from Jersey. Everybody knows the mob ran AC and they were not trying to let Trump come in to do business because they thought he was an ass. They thought he was an idiot and his father had to co-sign for him. And guess what? The guy bankrupted casinos. Well, Trump, you know, from the very beginning, extracted money as fast as he could from his casinos. So while other casinos reinvested in customer service software, nicer mattresses, replacing paint with wallpaper, Donald just took money out of his casino as fast as he could. Shocker. And he he never should have qualified for a license, but the attorney general at the time, who was an appointed official, wanted to run for governor. And Trump made it clear that if he didn't get a license on his terms, Mm -hmm. he would set out to ruin the reputation of this guy, who, by the way, didn't win in the end anyway. When Donald got into trouble, the casino regulators took his side against his bankers. He also got caught plying children who were 12 and 13 and 14 with liquor and limousines and hotel rooms. I mean, nobody mistakes a 12-year-old for a 21-year-old. No. All he did was pay a fine. He, the only known case of cheating in Atlantic City was roulette players at Trump Castle. Nothing happened to Donald for that, but the two uh, uh, commission, commission agents who uncovered this uh, they got in trouble. That and some other stuff. They got in trouble. And it, I wrote a whole book back in 92. It's on the wall there behind me, Temples of Chance, about how corrupt the whole process was. Uh, and then Donald eventually had this publicly traded casino company 
He stiffed workers, vendors, mm -hmm. and investors lost everything. But Donald took a minimum of $83 million out over the course of four bankruptcies. He then got pushed out. There were two more bankruptcies, and then the company disappeared. He's not a businessman. Right. He's a con artist who extracts money from businesses. So with that, um, with all of those bankruptcies, which I just never understood why that wasn't a bigger theme. Um, I mean, like people like you and me and others in 2016 were trying to explain to people like, don't that apprentice stuff is bullshit. <laughs> like this is really who Donald Trump is. I don't know why that that didn't break through in 2016. Uh, but I mean, if you have a theory, I'll, I'll... Oh, no, there's a big part. Of, I mean, I understand what happened back then. The fact is, that the New York Times, where I worked for many years, sets the news agenda in this country. And uh, Hillary Clinton was thoroughly scrubbed by the New York Times, big, huge, long piece about her. Donald wasn't scrubbed at all because editors there arrogantly said, oh, everybody knows Donald Trump is a crook. And I said to them, a number of them, no, everybody in Manhattan knows he's a crook. People in Keokuk, right. Iowa think he's a living god, a modern Midas. Mm -hmm. And you know, that nothing was reported about how Donald was involved up to his eyeballs with one of the biggest cocaine traffickers in America, did extraordinary favors for him. This is all public record stuff, by the way. Yeah. I have Donald's never gotten a correction out of me in 35 years because I'm very careful that I only say things I can prove beyond any, any doubt. And he was involved with this cocaine trafficker uh, doing favors that make no sense unless they were in business together. Um, he he was involved with all sorts of shady characters and strange deals that the news media just utterly failed to get into because politics reporters get rewarded for covering yes. the horse race, yep. not for covering the issues. That's right. It's it's all about access. And they're, you know, I, I worried that they have not learned their lessons from 2016. They have. Uh, and even 2020. Um, if it hadn't been for COVID and the protests, the George Floyd protests, I, I wonder if if uh, President Biden would be president now because I, we're in 2024 and it feels like 2016 all over again, the way that the mainstream media is covering this. It's just like, oh, yeah, Donald Trump has said stuff about being dictators and, oh, you know, bloodbaths and yeah, whatever. But but Biden is old. Like, What? They're, well, they're well, first of all, they're both, both about the same age. Right. Biden rides his bicycle faster than I do. I'm just a little younger than them. <laughs> he does push-ups in public. I mean, he's clearly in, in good health. He Way has some team. verbal tics because he had uh, stuttering as a right. child. And he can speak perfectly coherently. But the whole coverage that you're seeing in this country is, oh, well, the economy collapsed. You know, among the G20 nations, we have the lowest inflation, the greatest economic growth, the greatest additions of jobs, and wages are rising faster than inflation, especially for the bottom half of Americans. Now, there's yep. 50 years of mistreating, of mistreating workers in this country. It takes a while to catch up. Yep. But, you know, you want to live in Russia where interest rates are 16 um, uh, percent and inflation is, is completely out of control. Oh, what, what, David? Yeah, come on. Tucker Carlson says that Russia is much better. And they're, yeah. look at their supermarkets. Come on. Right. <laughs> Good God. Um, but you're right. And and I think that um, the media will play a huge role again because people don't pay attention the way we do. They're not going to go down five, six, seven paragraphs or open the paper or nobody opens a paper anymore. I'm dating myself. But, you know, scroll through. 15 articles to get to the, the the top line about what's actually happening. They they there's a certain responsibility I think that they have to cover this honestly. We always say here that we're under no obligation to tell both sides of a lie. And this this moral relativism that they're trying to put forth between Trump and Biden is just nuts. There is no there is no comparison, but here we are. But back to the the, the finance part. So speaking of the media, they're reporting that Trump is panicking. And oh, sure. um, about this, because this bond, the, the due date is the 25th, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. And his lawyers have been running around saying, he ain't got it. We don't have it. It's, uh, I think they said practically impossible was the quote for him to get this money. Um, and Letitia James, the AG, the New York AG, is already been very vocal about, I'll seize his stuff. Like, right. you know, we're, we're going to force compliance here. 
Uh, they're talking about the Westchester property property is one of the first ones that they're going after. And Trump, of course, is starting to use this again as a victim ploy, right? He's the victim. They're coming for Trump Tower. He's threatening Letitia James, telling her to keep her, quote, filthy hands off of Trump Tower and trying to bilk donors more to, you know, please send me money. A, do you believe that Trump is actually panicking? And B, this idea that he's this big, bad billionaire, but yet he's a beggar. He's a beggar billionaire. Never heard of such a thing. So here's a question to ask. Have you ever <laughs> seen a millionaire beg for $5? <laughs> right. No. Well, Donald is at least a millionaire, and I just watched him on the internet beg for $5 from the people he says he loves, the, quote, poorly educated, which means the people don't have any money. Um, Donald's problem is he inflated the value of these assets, and now they're going to turn out to be, especially in a fire sale, worth nowhere near what he claims. Mm -hmm. His place in Westchester County is a good example. Uh, he claimed at one point it was worth $219 million. All the testimony in the trial that was considered reliable shows it's worth around $20 million. Of course. So he inflated it 11, 10 or 11 fold. Well, when Letitia James goes to move on that property, and if she only gets $20 million for it, that's not going to do much to deal no. with the size of Trump's problem. His whole empire is about to fall apart. Now, he's not going to just take this lying down. His attorneys are going to object to every single thing. If Letitia James has a buyer who says $20 million cash, no questions asked, he's going to say, you're ripping me off. That place is worth $200 million. It's terrible. You shouldn't take any bid under $200 million, no matter how ridiculous that is. Right. And it'll take some time. But you know, it, this is like when Dorothy's dog Toto pulled the, the, uh, the, the curtain back on The Wizard of Oz. And we now all see, and, and if we don't, we will very quickly see that it was always a fraud. Donald was always yeah. running from one scam to another to get cash. And here's one way to think about that. The Stormy Daniels payoff. Mm. If you compute based on what Stormy Daniels wrote in her book, Donald was paying $8 million an hour for sex. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, who pays $8 million? I mean, even people who want to do that, nobody pays $8 million an hour. He's, <laughs> Don, Donald doesn't care about anybody else. It came out today that his valet testified that he went in and told him during January 6th, someone's been shot and killed. And Trump didn't have any reaction at all because he's a sociopath. He has no yeah. empathy with other people. That's right only sees himself. And he's been this way his entire life. And by the way, another aspect of this is Donald two years ago said he was going to have a terrible judgment against him because this judge in Gordon is a crook and they're all crooked. And, right? right. So he's known for two years this was coming. Did he arrange finances so that he could insulate himself? Did he take out loans? Did he set up plans? No, because Donald waits till the last minute. He's like a student who goes out partying on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights, and Monday morning gets up at seven and goes, oh, my term paper is due at noon. Right. It's exactly what he's right. like. Yeah. And he wants to, he always blames everybody yeah. else. Well, he's gotten away with it for so long, right? I mean, decades of this. It's hard to fathom how he's been able to fail up so many times. Well, he wasn't that big. That a key right. thing to understand That's true. is Donald always said, I'm I'm the biggest or the fifth biggest or the one of the 10 biggest developers right. in New York. He Nonsense. Was. Yeah. He wasn't in their in their league. And he was never worth going after. And when someone did go after him, he would spend a fortune on lawyers making their life miserable and difficult. And the attitude, I believe, became he's not worth it. I mean, I talked to a law hmm. enforcement guy uh, from of the late 60s who dealt with Donald and he, he said the attitude of his bosses was it's not worth our time or trouble he's going to tie up a lot of resources there are more serious criminals to go after well that's an interesting point actually because you're right uh people I mean like I as you know, I grew up in North Jersey, so I'm familiar with Donald Trump. And I remember kind of always him being a joke. And everybody in the tri-state area used to just be like, Donald Trump, like, you know, this guy with the gold stuff. And, oh, now he's hawking water. He's at an airline. He failed at the USFL. Like, he was, and, oh, now the casinos. Like, he was always kind of a jester. You know, no one ever took him very seriously. Um, but his his hanging around with gangsters. I love you, Doc. Come to Western New York, where I live, and get away from Rochester. Go out in the countryside. Yeah. People believe he's a living god. 
Oh, That's I know. I, I mean, oh, he's I know. a living guy. I travel all over the country. And, um, you know, Michelle Kinney, who's our EP here and who's our creative director, she's from upstate New York. And, like, you know, she, she tells us all the time about how people look at him. They, he has been very successful in making people believe that he's their champion. And it's, uh, I had a couple of weeks on the authors of this new book called White Rural Rage. And they talk all about that. Like, how is it that someone who, uh, who couldn't be any more polar opposite than these folks in rural America has become their champion? And it's a very fascinating study and what they found in their research. And, you know, it's troubling, really, um, to watch so many people be indoctrinated and duped by this guy. And actually, they're sending him their money to him to pay for his, the, the billionaire's legal fees, which the cognitive dissonance here with that is just unfathomable too. But we put out an ad called Suckers. And I think it's important to, to play that again, because that's exactly what these people are. They're being suckered by Donald Trump still to this day. Take a look. Dear MAGA, we have some bad news. No, not that he lost. Not that your little coup attempt failed and its planners and the attackers are going to jail. No, the really bad news is why Trump told you he lost. Why he set it up way before the 2020 election. It wasn't voter fraud, but it was fraud. Trump told you the election was stolen to rip you off, to sucker you, to take your hard-earned money and shovel it into his pockets. He spent it on himself, not to take back the White House. It was the biggest scam in political history. Every dollar you sent him paid to keep his shaky business empire and lavish lifestyle going. It was a sucker's game all along. And you know who the sucker is? It's you. Yes, indeed. Um, the internet gremlins are out in full force. We're going to get David back in a second to finish our conversation. But that is so true. He is still suckering people. That is part of the reason why the RNC has now been taken over by his people. His daughter-in-law, Lara Trump, is the co-chair. I just saw today that she's going to make a workout video with some WWE uh, uh, wrestler and somebody else like get what are we th these are so un th it's so unserious like everything is a grift everything and also it was reported that Trump super PAC um, I forget what it's called save America or something like that they actually spent more money in February on his legal fees than they took in there is actually a cash crunch going on here with the Trump campaign and their PACs. They're tightening their belts. They are telling people that, you know, they have to stay in cheaper hotels because they it's only March. They've still got seven months to go here and they're having trouble. Now, the money's starting to come in a little bit more for them. But like I said at the top of the program, Joe Biden is out raising Donald Trump by exponential numbers. As of this point, he raised $10 million in like the 24 hours after the State of the Union. So this idea that Trump continues to fleece people, you know, in the beginning, you could say, OK, maybe they didn't know. All right. But at this point, we're like eight years into this now, people. Eight years. Wake up or you get what you deserve. Like you can't feel sorry for people anymore. Like they, they feel as though this billionaire is so oppressed and so victimized that they have to give their money, hard earned money to Donald freaking Trump. You get what you deserve. I'm sorry. But it, it, the whole thing is, is, a, is a grifting operation. It always has been. And we're starting to see that now as he's begging people to David's point, begging people for money, $5, $10 to help pay his, his legal fees. It's that's why he's running. And we've said that Rick has said that when he was here, we would, we would talked about this two years ago. We said he has no choice. He's got to run for president. How else is he going to make money? Because his empire to David's point earlier was falling apart. It's tarnished. Michael Cohen, good friend of the show. Michael Cohen talks all the time about the worst thing Donald Trump ever did was run for president. It was just supposed to be a marketing tool for him and his businesses. And holy shit, he wakes up and he's president of the United States. But it's the worst mistake he ever made. He would not be in the situation he's in now if his ego could have just been in check and he could have just went on and continued to do his apprentice or sell his dumb things or whatever. He wouldn't be in this situation now. But, 
you know, everything happens for a reason, I guess. Um, we're really, as a country, beginning to see who we are as a country. Donald Trump has exposed a lot of things. Um, well, I guess he could have exposed other things. Ask Stormy Daniels. But welcome back, David K. Johnston. Uh, glad to be back. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with you. Yeah, that's all right. Like I usually, it's Rick Wilson who has the uh, has the internet problem. So you're you're sitting in for him tonight. You're taking over his inter his internet gremlins. No worries. It's all right. I got, I've got you covered. Um, I wanted to get back to our conversation about how Trump is going to get this money. And there's been a lot of questions going on around this national security risk potential, because there are no limitations on where he can get this money from, right? He could go and some Saudi billionaire could give him the money or some Russian oligarch could give him the money. And next thing you know, he's beholden to these people. I mean, he'd never get a security clearance if he were a regular person, just based off of this alone. Well, almost two years ago, I wrote a column when the fight was going on over Trump claiming he had turned back all the national security documents and he, he had not, it, which I said, Donald doesn't know anything about national security. I mean, he didn't even understand why there's a USS Arizona Memorial. What, what December 7th, 1941? Who cares about that? But he We're knows all value. And losers. We're all he suckers knows and losers. Value. Mm -hmm. And we know that he gave some very important nuclear submarine secrets to an Australian biz, biz, billionaire. That's right. And I raised the question of, has Donald sold our country out already because he understands value? And my guess is that the intelligence community knows things about Trump that they can't tell because doing so would compromise other national security interests. Right. And after all, intelligence is not law enforcement. It's a totally different game. So you don't Correct. necessarily arrest people. You watch people and you monitor people. So it, it, Donald it has no thought or understanding about what's appropriate or inappropriate. And let me draw a, a, an example of that. On the night of the 2011 gridiron dinner, the White House Correspondents' Dinner, uh, Barack Obama was as calm as a lamb on a summer's morn. And he told this little joke about Donald Trump sitting in the audience. He says, you know, I'm glad I don't have to make momentous decisions like whether to fire meatloaf. That was the very night where they were deciding, are we going to go get Osama bin Laden? Yep. He didn't say a word. They held off for one night for whatever reason that they wasn't ready. They went the next night. Donald wouldn't be able to do that. He doesn't have the inner integrity and the strength of character to know something he can never tell anyone his whole life. And that's one of the key reasons he's unfit to be president beyond the fact, you know, he knows he knows nothing. I marvel the people I run into or I get on talk radio about what a you know brilliant man he is. He, he knows one. Somebody said to me about a year ago, he knows more about taxes than anybody in the world. And I said, let me tell you something. I am a world recognized authority on taxes. I lecture all over the world at universities about taxes. Right. And Donald testified under oath. He knows nothing of accounting. I had to learn accounting in order to understand taxes because they're intertwined. He just makes this stuff up. He doesn't, he literally doesn't know anything. And yet people turn away from that. And I think the reasons they do that are very clear. First of all, he has pulled the veneer off what looked like our progress on civil rights and said it's okay mm -hmm. to engage in slurs against people you don't like. Uh, that's always been what the political correctness argument has been about. But he just right. tore, tore off, tore off the veneer. Secondly, the bottom 90% of Americans in 2016 made uh, only 11 months income compared to 1973. Hmm. On top of that, healthcare used to be on top of your wages. Now they take it out of your paycheck. Pensions, if you had them, were on top of your wages. Now they come out of your uh, uh, paycheck. And for every dollar Americans over those years added in equity in their homes, they took on $2 of debt. So 90% yeah. of Americans are much worse off and don't understand why and understandably are completely upset about this. Um, the, the third group are these, what I call faux Christians. Huh. Uh, they are people who oh, yeah. um, you know, believe in things that have nothing to do with what's actually in the Bible. The Sermon on the Mount is antithetical to their beliefs and their interests. Correct. 
And, you know, Donald one day was asked, you know, well, Mr. Trump is a Christian. When was the last time you asked God for forgiveness? Now, of course, anyone who's been raised as a Christian knows that you are always supposed to be in a state of asking God for forgiveness because you've right. done various things you shouldn't do because we're human beings. We're not perfect. And mm -hmm. Donald's answer was sort of what, 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 what? No. Right. I, I've never, never asked anyone for forgiveness in my life because I've never done anything that requires forgiveness. Yeah. What more do you need to know about what... A, uh, you know, pathological character is. And by the way, he has repeatedly in many forums called Christians fools, idiots, and schmucks. Yeah, because, of course he has. Of course yeah, he has. of course he has. He says the same thing about the military and our right. men and women in uniform who risk their lives to to protect this country and our freedoms around the world. And Look they're at suckers the and losers. Look pastors endorsing him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's despicable. And I've been very vocal about that. Um, I, I used to come from the evangelical world and I've lost very close friends, people in my home church that I, I'm the apostate. The horrible things that they said to me because I pointed out the fact that Donald Trump is anything but a Christian and why are we supporting him? And yeah. I, you, the names that I got called and it, it was really disappointing, but again, very revealing. And I'm one of the harshest critics of Christians who know better and who, how dare they hide behind the Bible to support this despicable human being, um, which speaking of despicable human beings, his lawyer, Alina Haba has been not only despicable, but incompetent and has cost him a lot of money. She was asked recently about this foreign interest thing. Um, since we're they're talking about that, and she was like, "Well, well, I can't, I can't discuss where he could get the money from." We have a clip of it. <laughs> These people. Is there any effort on the part of your team to secure this money through another country, Saudi Arabia or Russia, as Joy Behar seems to think? Well, there's rules and regulations that are public. I can't speak about strategy that requires certain things, and we have to follow those rules. Like I said, this is manifest injustice. It is impossible. It's an impossibility. I believe they knew that. I think that's why mid-trial, frankly, they changed their ask from $250 million mm -hmm. to the ridiculous amount of money that they've asked for. I think everything is done intentionally. I do not doubt that the witch hunt, that the election interference goal is what was uh, ringing steady and loudly and true throughout all these trials, frankly. And we're seeing it. It's the demise of our country, not the demise of Trump. So we'll we'll handle it as we always have and, and keep our heads up and keep right. working hard. Coming from the woman who said she'd rather be pretty than smart. Yeah. She's cost uh, well, Trump um, half a million dollars, half a billion dollars. How does she still have a job? Well, two things about our Constitution that are very relevant here, uh, uh, Tara. The first one is um, the, found, the framers of our Constitution were very concerned about a president being corrupted. So we, the emoluments clauses mm -hmm. prohibit not only foreign powers and governments from giving money to a president, but state governments. Now, Trump flouted that all throughout his presidency. He took money from right. states and everybody else. But, and through his Trump Hotel, by the way, which is yes, a lot of people try yes. to sue him with the emoluments clause. His and Trump Hotel, really other properties, he tried all, and the courts just didn't want to deal with it, so they didn't right. deal with it. Now, the found, framers never thought about, well, what if we had a president who was deeply in debt to a foreign interest, and what leverage would they have for him? It never occurred to them, so our Constitution is silent on this. That's very scary, because if one of Putin's oligarchs is behind any money Trump puts up, or MBS in Saudi Arabia, you know, the, who recently, not a few years ago, they they beheaded 39 men for the crime of praying for a better government. Uh, and, we have a national security nightmare on our hands. Now, there's one other issue here. I was the first person in America to say this, and it took a day or so, and then everybody came around and realized I'd gotten this right. <laughs> Nothing in our Constitution would prevent a convicted felon serving time in prison from being president of the United States and exercising yep. the duties of his office. He could be incarcerated by the state of New York or the state of Georgia, but he could exercise his powers. Now, hopefully the Senate Republicans, the 10 who wouldn't vote to remove him from office, only 57 senators voted, you need 67, would come to their senses and say, this is an absurdity, we can't have a president who's behind bars. I'm not holding but my breath. It, it, it could happen. And in the case of this election, this election is about, Joe Biden says six states. It strikes me there's 13 that are in play, but somewhere between six and 13 states. New York and California are going to be for Biden. Louisiana and Mississippi, they're going to be for Trump. 
And I hope that the Democrats, instead of spending a lot of money on TV advertising, focus on getting people registered, making sure they stay registered, mm -hmm. having lots of lawyers at, at the polls in those states on election day, and getting people to the polls, getting people to put people in their cars, call them on the phone. Because at the end of the day, democracy is about who gets the most votes. That's right. And the they also, I hope that they spend money on informing the people in these swing states about A, what President Biden has actually accomplished, which has been a whole hell of a lot. And I, as a lifelong Republican until Donald Trump, uh, I never thought that I'd be giving a Democratic president the amount of credit that I've given Joe Biden, but I'll give him credit where credit is due. Yeah. Um, he deserves that. More people need to know it. And two, they have to understand that democracy doesn't defend itself. And none of these other policy differences make a damn bit of difference if we do not have a free and fair constitutional republic dem and democracy for us to live in. That matters. Everyone says, oh, this is too esoteric. People don't care about democracy. You have to put it in terms that people understand. Do, right. do, do you like being able to go to the supermarket and buy whatever you want? Or do you want the government to regulate that to the point where they ration things because you can't get it? Do you like the idea of being able to go free, you know, have free movement or protest freely? Or do you want the government Gestapo to come in and mow people down using the Insurrection Act and have, uh, you know, martial law from a crazy person in the White House? Who or do you want the government to, to say what church you may or may not go Correct. to and whether you have to go or not? Uh, Donald, remember, has said repeatedly for many years now that the uh, uh, no one should be allowed to write about him that he doesn't approve of the articles. That's right. he, want, he doesn't believe in any freedom of speech except for Correct. himself. And the, the terrible Enemy of the people. His, his rounding up of people who are in the country without permission, who are here illegally, mm -hmm. would have horrible consequences. The uh, latest research from the Brookings Institution, which supports what's been done for years by Penn in their economic model, University of Pennsylvania, Yep. The, why have we continued to create so many jobs? We're on a tear creating jobs. Wages are rising faster than inflation. Why? Well, it turns out that that flood of immigrants from people at the Mexican border, those are strivers, people who walk from Honduras, a terribly dangerous country I've had to go to three times this century. Uh, people who come to America they're the ones who are going to make a difference. They're just like my ancestors who came from Ireland and Scotland and Norway. They were strivers who wanted to get ahead. And we have the best economy of any modern nation in the world under Trump. Before the pandemic, he underperformed. We wrote about this at DC Report again and again and again and showing how he seriously underperformed during that mm -hmm. And what Biden is doing is investing in the future of the country, investing in people. And that's what eventually makes money. Trickle down, you know, billionaires having another dollar doesn't make anybody rich. But if you invest in young people in their minds, if you invest in the infrastructure that will allow private wealth creators to build factories, produce services, uh, protect them through the courts, and have a competent, well, trained, well-educated workforce. That's how you create wealth. And Joe Biden gets that. I mean, he's the first right. president since Lyndon B. Johnson who really knows how Capitol Hill works. And he's done an amazingly good job. But boy, to read the news media, listen to the evening news, you would think he's faltering and stumbling. And it's, it, it's really terrible. It's so his, I, I fault his staff that they aren't out there pushing well, positives. Well, that's uh, why the Lincoln Project exists and other organizations trying to help get the word out and balance some of this out because yeah. uh, you're right, there has been a certain dereliction of duty here per painting the picture that is true of the accomplishments yeah. of Joe Biden and the successes of our country. And the immigration debate is a real one. I mean, our immigration system is screwed up. Our border security is failing. And there are, most of the people coming over are good and decent people, but we need to fix the system. And, well, and Tara, figure out a thing, way. One of the things people have forgotten, Tara, uh, Donald Trump slashed by 80% the money that was going to Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. And one, the, one yeah. of the effects of that is all the people coming to the border, the rise of criminal gangs, the right. investment of 10, 12-year-old girls into prostitution and, young, and boys into robbery squads. 
all if we had not had that cutoff in money proposed by Trump's uh, Minister of Hate, Stephen Miller, good God, um, we wouldn't have the same numbers of people trying to get into our country to escape rape and murder. Right. I mean, but you're talking policy, David, and that's not what yeah. he wants. He wants slogans, America first. Like they don't recognize the importance of that money being invested in the 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 uh, the triangle states there, the northern triangle states, right? What do they call them? Right. The, um, the triangle. Yep. Yeah. Right. And to the idea is to help fix those countries so that people aren't fleeing to come here. Yeah. Um, and then you had certain security uh, agreements like the Merida Initiative and th things like that that went back to the George W. Bush days that were security agreements with Mexico and those and those countries um, to help abate some of this. All of that was thrown out the window because Trump didn't give a damn. And, and, right. well, he didn't and now we're these... reaping the... Well, he didn't care. He didn't care. He, did, he didn't and care. He didn't understand. You know, Trump gave a speech Saturday where he said he's going to put 100% tariff on cars coming through from Mexico. Yeah. Uh, gee, you know, there was a president who renegotiated NAFTA mm -hmm. and had a whole new agreement put in place. Yep. That was Donald Trump. So Correct. he's really complaining about his own his policy. It's unbelievable. But, no, you know, again, people don't pay attention. But we're yeah. here to help them continue to, to, to pay attention and inform. And I am so grateful for your work, David. Please keep it up. You have been an intrepid voice and your work is so, so important. And thank you for joining us tonight. Before you go, your prediction. Does Donald Trump make the deadline on Monday? And if not, what happens after? Are we going to see Trump Tower I don't become think make something else? Yeah, I don't, he's a very bad credit risk. He doesn't pay back his loans. So I don't think anybody's going to rescue him. If they do, it, it, we need to get to the bottom of what's really going on. And Letitia James will immediately begin to move on his bank accounts and some of his properties, and he will fight it every step of the way. Even if they're ridiculous motions, he's going to do his best to delay, delay, delay. But you're going to see liens put on the properties very quickly. And Donald's existing mortgages have requirements. He has to maintain a certain net worth and a certain cash balance. Mm. Tisha James grabs the cash balances. Suddenly his loans on uh, 40 Wall Street, on the, uh, the, the Doral uh, Golf and Country Club right by the Miami airport, those can be called by the lenders. So we may see his whole economic situation fall apart. I would draw a, an analogy mm. here to Game of Thrones in the second season, the king of Carth claimed to have these fabulous riches and all this gold and whatnot in a vault. And Queen Daenerys, the future wannabe Queen Daenerys and her troop come and get him up in the middle of the night. They open up the vault. There's nothing there. She locks him and his wife inside. Donald's end of game here is not going to be that physically the same. But financially, we're going to see that it's basically an empty vault it's a house of cards. Mm. He won't be able to pay. And once the house of cards comes apart, of course, everything starts to fall apart. And only Ivanka, who escaped the case and married Jared Kushner, is going to end up doing well at the end of the game. Well, David, I think there are a lot of us that think that would, would hope to see Donald Trump locked inside of something and throw away the key because he deserves to be there. He's a freaking criminal. Um, oh, he is. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to follow David, please follow him on Twitter and check his writings out over at dcreports.org and check out his books. They're all super interesting if you want to get more in depth on Trump and lots of other things. So David K. Johnson, thank you, my friend. Hi, Tara. Take care. I'm telling you, he is uh, a godsend because he does it so we don't have to. My God, um, kudos to our friend David Johnston. So on that note, really quickly before we go about Jared Kushner, and I forgot to, to ask David about this, but Kushner has been cashing in on his time in the White House and got $2 billion from the Saudis, got bailed out of his problems on Sixth Avenue with this building, and now he's building things in Serbia. And uh, he actually made some comments about Gaza and how the waterfront in Gaza is, is super valuable. It's valuable. So pay attention to see what happens if Donald Trump starts uh, changing his, his mind about what, what should be happening over there in Gaza. It's always, there's, there's always, it's always about the bottom dollar for these people. Always, always. They're just awful individuals and can never have power again.
Let's make sure that doesn't happen. On that note, thank you guys for joining me this week. We'll see you next week on The Breakdown. Take care.